Hey guys, Billy Bosco here with the movie movement and my van is finally done. I thought it was time to finally give you guys a full blown tour of it. So let me take you through it. We're gonna start with the outside first. I have a Dodge ProMaster 2500. There are a lot of options with vans that come in different brands, Nissan, Mercedes, or Dodge. I was leaning towards a Mercedes, but then I was told services to them can be a little pricey, but they said the Dodge ProMaster, any technician can work on that, so I decided to go with that. In terms of size, the 1500 seemed the easiest to drive, so I was leaning towards that. The 3500 seems like you get the most space, but I didn't want to deal with lugging around that huge of a, a car. So the 2500 seemed like just right, so I ended with that. And I'm thankful I did because it has enough space for everything I need. But obviously, well, I'm sure I would have been happy with either size. But I love what I have. We're gonna come inside. The light. It is a nice, cute little doorbell switch. You press it on, it comes on. The lights are the only thing that are attached to the car battery. When I bought the van used, it came with this on and it came insulated too. And I just didn't bother rewiring it. Their time to turn off after the five minutes. You can run it for like a good maybe half hour without draining the car battery. The front, I kept relatively the same. I didn't really touch much because there's not much really to touch. It has plenty of storage there, up here. I'm not even sure what I'm gonna put there yet, but I'm sure I'm gonna put a bunch of things up there. The one thing I did add to the front of it is I added a nice little rotating seat. That way a guest can sit here, a guest can sit here, a guest can sit there, and we can all sit and converse together. Also, this van sleeps Two people on the bed, one person in the guest bed comfortably. If it's four people uncomfortably, this seat can recline down to 180 degrees or lay flat. I have slept there before. Not entirely the most comfortable bed in the world, but it does serve its purpose. For the cabinets, I knew I needed a lot of space in the van because I have a lot of things and I plan on getting a lot of souvenirs along the way. So I wanted to put storage every wall possible. The cabinets, they're locked. Open it up very easy. Plenty of cabinet space, plenty of cabinet space. Very easy to build actually. It's just three pieces, one board here, one board here. And then you put some uh, brackets right here to screw it in place and some down here screwed in place. Cabinets were a lot easier to build than I thought they were. I was actually very worried that they would not be sturdy. So I'm happy with the way those turned out. Moving on, we go to the kitchen. Now for the kitchen, I wanted to have it on this side of the van, even though my battery is over here, I needed, I wanted to have the shower capability. I get back from a hike, I pull the shower down, I quickly hose off, just like so. I do have a gravity fed shower in the back that you kind of fill up and hook up on the van. That is a much more time consuming to set up. If I have more time, I'll do that. But for those quick hikes, I'd rather just quickly get rinsed off. The sink, it's a Rubati sink. It is so much deeper than I thought it'd be. It comes with a drain dish, very deep, Plenty of space in there. Able to wash dishes fine. Has a drain cap too to catch the breeze. Very pleased with it how it turned out. We have a Thermomate natural gas and propane stove. It came preset for natural gas, but they gave you the parts to convert it to propane. Now, I did it myself, but then I had a technician come to double check my work to make sure it was leak proof. They definitely recommend doing that because if you don't, there's a chance of leakage or a chance of blowing up. I didn't want either of those to happen. But very simple, press down, turn it on. The one downside is, is it will need an outlet because it has an automatic igniter to light that fire. So I had to run a wire down and around the van to my battery, which is over here. All good there though. Cabinet space, I have my spice rack up here for all my spices. I'm not even sure how many I'm gonna use. I just know I have every spice under the sun now, just in case I wanna use them. I'll keep my dry food here. Most of the time I plan on eating some MREs just add water, but eventually I will work my way up to cooking actual food and clean the dishes, unfortunately. Last cabinet space, I have no idea what to do with. There's so much space and so much cabinet space in this place. I will figure it out along the way. Over here, same thing. I have toiletries over here. I have my shower stuff over here. Over here, I just knew I needed some kind of nightstand by my bed. So I have my bedside with my outlet with my bedside fan. And then I have my Air Max fan above head. 
Now I will say, I thought the fan would blow straight down. Apparently it blows the air at an angle. So if I were to do this again, I would probably put the fan in the middle. That way it's more closer to my sink and the air will come and hit me diagonal. But thankfully I have my mini fan, so I'm all covered there. Moving on to the guest bed. Since I plan on going to national parks, I plan to make some, some videos. I still do online personal training, so that's a big part of my business. So I needed a permanent place to work. I knew mostly it'd be me traveling by myself, but I would have some guests sometimes as well. So this serves as a desk first, guest bed second. So I'm here doing my work. And then when a guest come over, press the button, pop it up. This will go over here. This will unscrew. Lay that back there. I put in some brackets right here so the bed will just sit on. And then the cushions are custom made. I found a, west, a website, I'll probably tag it in the description, but they do custom size mattresses. And there you go, guest bed. Guest blanket up there. Only downside, this van is not over six foot friendly because I'm not over six feet. So if I have a guest over six feet, thankfully they will sleep here and the seat can simply go all the way forward so their feet can hang over there. First of all, this painting, my friend Sam did it. Did a great job, I love what she did. On the inside, this is where I store all my clothes, all my outfits, t-shirts up here, good t-shirts in the back somewhere, long sleeve, pants, shorts, shoes, slides, socks, underwear down there. I'm not sure how many outfits I'm gonna need for this road trip. I'm bringing like three of each thing, three shirts, three nice shirts, three shorts, three nice shorts, three hoodies, three pairs of pants, three underwear, three socks, probably more underwear, probably more socks. But that covers that. The bed, I knew. I wanted a nice size bed, so I had a custom mattress from Tosha come and do it. They actually came with a buffer down here that helps keep the moisture off the ground so it can kind of ventilate out so you don't, you don't get any mildew buildup. I did Singer Cedar Tongue Roof just from Home Depot. They all slide in place. They're very easy to install, relatively cheap, painted over it. So that covers the wall too. So guys, for the fridge, you open it up. It's got just enough space. It has, it has a freezer compartment as well, but it holds everything I need. And then for here, this is where I keep my battery. Renergy 2000 watt inverter. Renergy 175 amp hour lithium ion battery. That is powered by, how many? 400 watts of solar power on top. So far, I haven't run out of battery yet. I thought about adding a uh, battery isolator but so far the solar has held up very well and I have not had a need for it yet. To charge stuff, right up here, outlet, fan, turn the inverter on, turn it off. So under the countertop, we have silverware in here. We have dishes, pots, pans in there. Under here, the thing that powers the sink and the stove. For the propane stove, we have this cute little two pound uh, five pound growler from REI. I didn't know it came in that size before. Even when I took it to get filled up by a, a diesel company, they thought it was adorable. They didn't know it came that size. We all had a good laugh about it, but I'm glad I have it. And I'm glad it comes in this cute little compartment. I keep my trash down here too. For the sink, I have one clean water tank, one gray water tank. This will, the, the 12 volt pump will pull it up, come through the sink, down through the drain, and go into the gray water tank. After that, I simply just take the tube out and pour the water out, and it's a very simple process. I also have my carbon monoxide detector down here, just in case the propane, having it indoors does pose some risk, causing some leaks or possible explosion. I don't want either of those to happen, so I got the detector there to keep me safe. For the art in the van, this is my main goal. This is the whole point of the movement, the whole point of the van, to go to every single national park and put a sticker up along the way. My sister got me that like six years ago. I never thought I'd actually build a van to go around the US, but I'm glad she got me it. I've already got some dumb out of the way, but when I do take off in the van, like around June, I plan on going east first, work my way up, come down all the way through north, down, hit California, and finish with Colorado and Utah and finish back home in Texas. Then I'll hit up Alaska next summer. Cause this van, I don't wanna take it out in the winter time because I don't want to be in the cold, all right? We're going to run back now. I needed a lot of space. 
I didn't know what I was going to put in there, but I got the space. Now, originally, I built the bed a lot higher, anticipating to put a, put, put a bike in there, but then I had to hop in bed every night. I was upset about that, so I ended up lowering the bed. I can still fit a bike in there, but it needs to be a folding bike. On one side, I have outdoor stuff. I have my chairs. I have my sports, my football, my skateboard back there. My backpacking gear is all in this box for washing clothes. One option is to go to the laundromat. I'm not always gonna wanna do that. I don't wanna always be that person held up at a laundromat. So I have this bucket. It is a very cool design. Flip it over, put it on top. Put your clothes in here, put some water. It can't hold that many clothes. It probably holds like five, six articles of clothing. Put water, put soap. You actually can sit on the bucket. So you sit on the bucket and then you simply just pump it and it'll spin the whole clothes, wash it. I'll close the doors halfway, put a string over, let them dry during the day, during my downtime during the national parks, because I'm assuming I'm gonna have a lot of it. So this, I hope it gets me by all the way. If I have more clothes or veggies I need to wash, I will take them to a laundromat or a friend's house. But I'm glad I have this for the shower. When I do have more time to shower, I'll close the van doors halfway, hang the shower curtain across so no one can see, and I have a gravity fed shower. So guys, that is the entire van. From here, I take off in probably late May, early June, hit every national park along the way, and document the process, take you guys with me. If you guys have any questions about what I did right or where I probably went wrong or what I would do differently, don't hesitate to reach out because I would love to help you guys. Thank you.